what's going on how you guys doing if you're seeing this right now that means i've had a productive day i hope you did too but if you're like commenting and subscribed that means you fuck with me which means i fuck with you period so today guys it's another story time welcome back welcome back have a seat get comfortable and let's get right into it so my last story time was basically how Kanan was out of the picture and ghosts immediately settled into my life. When I say that that man was my man after he fought Kanan, he was my man, literally. He came over to wash a load of clothes, y'all, and he never left. He literally never left. I mean, if Bad Decisions was a person, but at the time, it felt right. At the time, you fought for me. You won me over. You defended me. You got your ass beat for me. At that time, it was no other way that Kanan was going to leave me alone. It was no other way that me and Kanan was going to get out of our toxic cycle until ghost for him my brothers did not have an impact on Kanan he still was calling still was trying to come back Kanan honestly had proposed to me one day y'all we was on the phone and I'm steady no it's not gonna work out we can't be together I'm tired I can't do this no more this nigga says what if we get married what if I wanted to marry you I said where the ring Cannon, where's the ring? I mean, I ain't got no ring yet, but I could get it. And honestly, I probably would have said yes. If he were to propose to me at that time, I probably would have said yes, y'all. Because this was like me and Ghost were still texting and talking. You know what I'm saying? This is before they fought. I was still weighing my options. I'm like, maybe we could be together and we just don't live together. But we was together damn near every day for years. It was no moving backwards and not living together, trying to still be together. Like, I was going back and forth for a while before Ghost came over and they eventually fought and all of that jazz. So, at this moment, I am in a full-blown relationship with Ghost. He is living with me and the twins, y'all. I was happy. Ghost was everything Kanan was not like when me and Kanan was together the first time when we were younger you know he was really soft with me but our last relationship when we tried to get back together after the twins he was just rough you know what I'm saying he would be soft like in our intimate moments but he was just a rough neck ghost was completely opposite he was soft spoken with me he would you know what I'm saying rub on me and talk to me nice and this man would literally rub my feet and kiss each toe while he doing it like so good to me in this moment it was just like a breath of fresh air he was just everything I needed he was a gentleman he was a man he was uh he could be aggressive in certain moments he could be um like commanding you know he knew how to take control of situations it was just so much I was attracted to and plus he was fine y'all he was so fucking fine to me like and especially after he fought Kanan I was looking at him like like I said, y'all, my knight in shining armor. So, <sighs> this man had just got out of jail, as I mentioned. And I did say that I eventually found out why he was in jail. So, apparently, his ex and him was living together out in some of the city. And they was getting into it. They was arguing. She ended up putting him out. He had went to work, came back to the locks changed and all the windows locked and he broke into his house. Now I'm putting quotations because he did live there, but it was not his house. So he broke into his house. She called the police. He tried to go on the run. He ended up flipping the car. Uh, 
And when they did catch him, he had all type of other traffic tickets, fleeing and looting. The man was a runner. He was a track star. Like, he would get the fuck on on the police anytime he ever got pulled over. And he was finally getting caught after, after breaking into his house and going on another run and flipping a car. This is why he was in jail. I can't remember really how long he was in there, but he was on probation. So, I eventually found that out, and I'm like, you know, wow, that's crazy. He really, like, talking dog shit about his ex, you know what I'm saying? F that bitch, and she crazy, put me on my own house where I pay all the bills. She didn't even have to work. He going through all this. So, at this point, you know, I didn't already quit my job at the check cashing place. Ghost would do work with Angel's baby daddy sometimes, and we would get a couple dollars, but... You know, I ain't had no rent. I, I own my house. The house was in my name, so it was paid in full. But we still had bills. I still had a car note. I still had to get gas and all type of stuff, y'all. I'm going to try to explain this without incriminating myself too much. I mean, even though all of this is alleged, um, all of this is made up, I am telling the story, y'all. I'm making this up, telling the story. So, I'm not sure how it came about, but, you know, I tell Ghost that I used to work at this check cashing place. So, at the check cashing place, when you first go, especially on the days when I used to work by myself, you go in, you put your code into the alarm, and, you know, the alarm shuts off. So I had a code, the manager had a code, and I'm pretty sure like the owner or something had a code. So there was another code that you could put in that the alarm would shut off, but the police will be sent in 10 to 15 minutes or however long it takes them to get there. The police will be sent. It's like an automatic police code. So just in case you're getting like held up and somebody is forcing you to shut the alarm off type of thing, you could put that code in and it will send the police. So, you know, I still had the key to this building, allegedly. And we come up with this plan, y'all. We come up with this plan. I'm going, this video is going to be so short, I promise you, because I'm not even sure why or how this is going to come out. And watch this be the video that blow up. We need some money, y'all. We need some money. We come up with this plan to go to this check cashing place and get the money. Now, you know how certain check cashing places will have a sign after they close that say, oh, there's no money on site. There's no money on this lo in the location. That was a lie for my story, y'all. They will put that sign up that say there's no money on site, but the money will be on site. I remember after closing time, we would hide the money somewhere in the store, somewhere in a drawer, in the box, in the behind, something behind. You know what I'm saying? Making it real hard to find. But sometimes we would take everything to the bank. It was like random days we would take everything to the bank and pick it back up the next day, whoever worked the next day. But some days, most days, we did hide it somewhere different in the store. It was about eight different hiding places in this store right you never supposed to put it in the same hiding place you did the day before but it's only eight you know what i'm saying i'm not sure if she had new some that she didn't tell me about but i knew about eight of them so we devised this plan to go to this check cashing place use my store key put in the code that will send the police and he literally has about six to ten minutes to go to each and every hiding place and find the money so y'all the day comes that we about to do it i'm geek because you know what i'm saying it's eight hiding spots i already know where they at all you got to do is go in there and look you know what i'm saying it's really a foolproof plan all the ways they can track back to me is not in my head even though you know, only somebody that worked there would know that code that will cut off the alarm. Clearly, there's not going to be any doors or windows broken. So, clearly, somebody had a key. But 
I wasn't thinking about that, y'all. Allegedly. This is all alleged. I was not thinking about that allegedly. And I allegedly did not care because I literally needed some money. Allegedly. So, y'all, we go um close to the location of the store. We park around the corner. Now, how the location was set up. Let me not say too much because some of y'all literally know where I used to work at. So, either way it go, we pull around the corner from the location. I cut all the lights off. I'm sitting there parked. The plan is for him to hop the wall, run through the parking lot, go in, put the code in, ramsack that bitch, get the money, come back. Six to ten minutes he had. So, this man is ready. You know what I'm saying? He is about this life. This is my first time ever doing anything that could potentially put me away. I'm nervous. I'm sitting in the car. As soon as I pull up and turn the lights off, we go over the plan one more time. And he like, bet. He gets out the car. I wanted to stop him so bad. I'm like, no. But he was gone. He was like a thief in the night. I promise you this man was like a little ninja. Like, he was like a cat with seven lives. I promise you more stories you would know that he just survived. He he got seven lives, nine lives, y'all. So, he go. I'm literally sitting there. I'm sitting there, you know what I'm saying? I can't see the parking lot from where I'm parked, but I see, you know, the wall is so tall that I know he went over the wall. So, I'm just sitting there. I'm sitting there for about, you know, five, six minutes. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I'm sitting there. I'm waiting. I got the radio. I ain't got the radio on. Got the car off. I'm looking around, making sure you know anybody looking out their window. Cause we kind of in the hood, but you know how people is when somebody when if somebody hear you pull up outside their house, they gonna look. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking around, making sure ain't nobody standing in their door or walking up to the car trying to see who I am, see if I'm you know waiting for them or something. So I'm like, ooh, hurry up! I feel like. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm sitting here for a long time, but this man only have nine minutes, y'all. So I'm sitting there. I hear rustling in the trees. I see him running back with this big ass something in his hand. So he get back in the car like, go, 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 go. I'm like, okay, what happened? What happened? He like the police. I saw when I was hopping the wall, I saw them pulling up. So <laughs> we pull off and hit the main street. You know what I'm saying? And I see police cars pulling up to the store we just riding past i'm thinking like yeah got him you know what i'm saying got him like how much you get i ain't get no money what you mean you didn't get no money he like i looked everywhere you said to look i looked in every single space i just started tearing the whole store up looking because it wasn't in none of the places you said it was i'm like so what is that that you got in your hand he took the machine that prints out the money orders. Allegedly. Allegedly, this is all part of my imagination. This might not have happened the way I'm saying it happened. But he allegedly took the money order machine, y'all. So I'm driving like, what the fuck are we supposed to do with the... He like, I don't know. I couldn't find the money. I had to take something. If I would have got caught, this would have all been for nothing. It's still for nothing because what are we going to do with this Western Union machine, right? So I'm pissed because, you know, now I'm thinking about how it's all about to lead back up to me. At this point, I hadn't been working there for a couple months. You know what I'm saying? You would think that they would be like, hey, contacted me for the uniform I didn't pay for, get the key back. You know what I'm saying? You would think they'd be changing the codes up. But they didn't, y'all. And now it's sinking in. Like, this is all about to come back to me. For some reason, the Western Union machine seemed worse than if I would have got all the money that was left in the store. Like, just it just seemed federal, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, my God. So, we get home we take the machine in the house so we trying to open it you know what i'm saying we all we got is blank money orders allegedly and we got the machine that prints them out so i'm trying to figure it out it gotta be something we could do with this like we literally have blank money orders and the printer like it's gotta be something right 
So I get the Google and stuff. And it's basically saying how this machine might be tracked. If you try to plug it in, this machine might have a GPS. It's definitely going to register to any type of computer you try to plug it into. There's nothing we could do with this hunk of plastic and this stack of blank money orders. Y'all, if I'm making this up, I am making this up. So, God, please don't strike me down. Because all of this is alleged. You know my heart. Um, Right. So, you know, time is going on. We still don't know what to do with this machine. This is when I call myself trying to do hair. So, I will post on Facebook like, hey, you know what I'm saying? If you need braids, I was really good at braids. I would do that. I was babysitting. I would be helping my mom with stuff. She would throw me a couple dollars. I'm just hustling. I'm just doing stuff to make a couple dollars so I can pay this look li these little bills we got. So now this man ghost comes up with the bright idea. And I can't put it all on him because my dumbass was just going for it. Like I was just okay, let's do it. Because you know, you can't knock it till you try it. I mean, but does that apply to crime it shouldn't but that's that's what i was doing i'm trying to find my way in this world like maybe i'm supposed to be a criminal maybe i could be good at it you know what i'm saying i'm smart you sneaky you know what i'm saying you like a ninja you like to you know how to climb walls and jump on type of buildings and scurry down the side of the wall like you good at stuff like that and i got the brain you feel me so maybe we could do this he comes up with this idea to go out to the city he used to stay in because he was saying how you know the houses are so far apart it's so much land it'd be dark you know it don't be a whole lot of police like it do in the city you know what i'm saying we could go out here and people allegedly be leaving all type of expensive stuff in their cars and you know people leave money phones uh cards whole wallets whole purses you know what i'm saying shoes jewelry people leave all type of stuff in their car because you know these this is the type of city where people leave their door open you know what i'm saying people sleep with their windows open people don't even have blinds you know what i'm saying and this you know that's always been weird to me but he's telling me how it's basically some easy licks out there where he used to live and all we got to do is go real late and see what see what they got in their cars you know what i'm saying we're not gonna be in no houses but we just gonna see what they got in their cars. Allegedly, this is all alleged. <laughs> so, time is going on. We make a plan. We're gonna do it. The night comes, right? We get, you know what I'm saying? We stop at the store and get snacks and stuff. Because we, we basically about to go on this stakeout, y'all. So, we go. This is our first night doing it. We go, we, you know, creeping around the neighborhood, parking, hopping out, seeing who car door open. He had set some alarms off, so we had to, you know, leave a few areas a couple times. I'm not going to go into too much detail. All of this is alleged, but, you know, the first time we did it was a good night. We had got a few hundred dollars. We had got some phones, some computers, we were able to sell, you know what I'm saying? So the first night was a success, if you want to call it that. I mean, don't judge me, y'all, because my, my, my karma comes really fast in this situation. So, you know, it's a good night. My adrenaline is like rushing. We get back home. We count our money up. I'm, you know, texting people trying to see what I could get off. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get rid of this, trying to get rid of that. We found a few things, you know. All together, we probably had made like $700 with everything we end up selling and stuff like that. So, I mean, riding out there with $40 in gas money and coming back home with $700, Sounded like a good night. I'm like, okay, we do this a couple more times and we can chill. I can have time to get me another job and stack some money up, right? So cool. We only need to do this a couple more times. That's my idea. So the next time we do it, y'all, I had the twins. You know what I'm saying? I was not able to drop them off. 
So, I mentioned before when I was just getting this house that it is a two-family flat. Now, at the time, my female cousin has stayed upstairs. She's my older cousin. Um, she has stayed upstairs, and me and Ghost was staying downstairs with the twins. So, I don't have no babysitter. I got the twins. I called my cousin like, hey, me and Ghost about to run, you know, to the store real quick. The twins are down here asleep. Um, just listen out for them. If they wake up, you know, call me, but I'm going to be back. She's like, okay, cool. I got you. I'll listen out for them. Y'all, we leave and we actually stop at Angel's house. Now, this is still before she ended up moving down the street. And I mean, that'll come up in other stories, but she did eventually move down the street from me. But this is before Angel moved. She was still at her old house where I had originally met Ghost at. So we stop over there and kick it with them for a minute. We basically, you know, killing time, waiting for it to get late enough before we you know hit the road so we can do what we do now nobody knew what we was doing we wasn't like in a group of robbers and we was all about that life this is something that ghost had an idea to do and my dumb ass agreed to it and it was between us because i know angel would have talked me out of it i know angel baby daddy would have told him like bro if you need some money you need to come and work with me but you know what i'm saying ghost really wasn't a dealer he really wasn't like a transactional type of person he didn't like dealing with people you know what i'm saying he would rather be a thief in the night allegedly so we sitting there bullshitting wasting time whatever so the skin late it's getting late we like okay it's about that time we get in the car we head out so we end up stopping at the gas station because we needed to fill up folks so we can get on the road y'all i'm looking in the car for my purse you know what i'm saying because he didn't have no money. He honestly would get money and give it all to me. I would pay the bills that I needed to pay and give him his allowance out of his money most of the time. And that was it. So he didn't have any money on him. I had all the money. So I'm looking in the car for my purse. I'm like, hold on, stand up. I'm looking under the seat. I didn't left my purse at Angel House. Now, we didn't actually drove about... 25 30 minutes towards the way we was going anyway i just so happened to say oh let's get some gas not nah, so we don't have to get it later type shit so we are already 30 minutes away from where i left my purse we don't really even have enough gas to get back to my purse so we decide to go out here because we probably going to end up getting some money anyway. So let's just go out here since we almost there. And then use that money to put the gas in the car to get back. We might not even make it back to get my purse. You know what I'm saying? So let's just go out here, get this money, use that money. Allegedly. All of this is allergic, y'all. We go out here. We hit a couple streets. We ain't getting nothing but change, y'all. We ain't getting nothing but literal change. I want to say we had got a couple laptops, allegedly. We had got a phone. We had got, you know, this was a bad night. This was the, and this is only our second time doing it. And this night is not coming to nothing. The gas is steady coming down. This nigga is coming back with quarters and singles. Like, he's coming back to the car with cup holder change. And computers, nothing we could do with a computer right now. Like, so after a couple blocks, I'm like, you know what? We gotta go. We gotta try to make it back home because we can't keep hitting these corners and literally run out of gas on somebody's street. And they, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just have to get away from this area before we run out of gas. So I'm on the freeway, y'all. I'm trying so hard to make it back to the city we get so close to the city i'm not gonna say what city it was but it's definitely a suburb on the west side i come up off the freeway i'm like let's just see if we can 
bum some money from somebody like you know how you go to the gas station they be like you got ten dollars i'm on e i ran out of gas you know what i'm saying most of the time i'll be saying no y'all unless i'm really feeling generous unless i really got it and i'm just feeling like it i would help somebody out with gas you know what i'm saying It'd be a couple people at the gas station just need some spare change i'm just trying to get something to eat if i got some change if i got some singles that i don't need i would definitely hook some people up so I'm planning on going to the gas station being one of those people that just be, can you please help me? I just need some gas to get home. You know what I'm saying? That's the plan coming off the freeway, y'all. We about to bum some gas money off somebody at the gas station. So we go to the gas station. Nobody is at this gas station. It's probably about 3 o'clock in the morning in the suburbs i'm surprised the gas station was even open nobody pulls up to this gas station we are literally sitting at the pump waiting for somebody anybody to pull up we sat there for an hour it's now four o'clock in the morning 4 35 o'clock in the morning nobody comes to the gas station so i'm like okay well let's just ask the guy behind the counter like if he could look out you know what i'm saying well, i got a couple singles maybe he could try to add something to it the gas station clerk was not budging we trying to add these quarters up it's adding up to nothing we literally didn't even put a half a gallon in this fucking car while my purse is sitting at angel house with the money in it like dumb like all of this is just stupid and alleged alleged allegedly 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 so we put this half a half a gallon in the car. We gonna at least try to make it home. I can't even make it to Andrew House. I at least gotta make it home because the twins, y'all. The twins. My cousin is listening out for them, but the twins. I gotta get back home. So we pull off from the gas station. I don't know whether to drive slow or try to drive fast. Either way, we run out of gas. We run out of gas. We hadn't even made it to Detroit yet. We still in a west side suburb. So as the car is cutting off, I pull over, you know, in front of this building or whatever. So we just sitting there. Literally have no clue what to do. I'm calling Angel. He's calling Angel Baby Daddy. I can't call my mama. I can't call my daddy because there's no explanation for where I'm at, who I'm with, and what the fuck I'm doing. Because at this point, um, my mom hadn't met Ghost yet. Uh, we were kind of just doing our thing. My mom barely um came over to my house anyway. Because I used to smoke or whatever. And she hated the smell of smoke. I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to smoke hella weed. So she barely used to come over to my house anyway. And anytime she did come, you know what I'm saying? Ghost would make himself spare. So she hadn't met Ghost at this point. From the time Candy and Ghost fought to this moment where I'm running out of gas in front of this building with Ghost, it had probably been not even two months. So this is not even two months of us dealing with each other. I'm going on these crime sprees and now we're sitting in the suburbs without gas and stolen property in the trunk allegedly right so i'm just sitting there we calling people nobody answering the phone it's four o'clock in the morning and you know angel and her people drunk sleep and that's literally the only people i can call because i'm too embarrassed to call anybody else right so i'm like you know what i gotta pee let me go around this building and pee right so apparently, Ghost opened his door and peed right inside the door while I walked around to the back of the building to pee. I'm get down peeing, you know what I'm saying? The whole time I'm peeing, I'm just sad. I'm just like, this is the dumbest shit. I ain't never in my life ran out of gas. I ain't never in my life left my purse somewhere. Like, what the fuck? Ain't nobody answering the phone. What is we really about to do? Try to walk home try to we got enough for bus fare like do i leave my truck here i'm peeing thinking about all of this so i wipe you know throw the tissue <laughs> put my pants up i go to walk back around this building to get back to the car y'all i see flashing lights red and blue and white lights i see the lights 
pulled up behind my truck. So now I'm speed walking because what the fuck is about to happen? I'm scared. Heart instantly stopped, but it's still my adrenaline is still going. You know what I'm saying? So I walk up to the car and they like, oh, please stand over here. They got ghost pressed up on the car. I already got him handcuffed, searching him. And they ask him for his name. Now his name is Ghost. Let's say his brother's name is Tommy, right? So they ask him for his name. He's saying that his name is Tommy. He's like, yes, my name is Tommy, Tommy Egan, Tommy Egan. They like, Tommy Egan, that's your name? And they like, what's your name? You know, I'm Ebony Deshaun, I'm Ebony Deshaun. And they like, okay, show me some identity. I don't have my ID. Why don't you have your ID? I'm like, I honestly left my purse. That's how we ran out of gas. And I was just using the bathroom, you know what I'm saying, behind the building. They like, well, we got a call saying that somebody was trying to break into the building. We pull up and we see him urinating outside. Indecent exposure. Da, 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 da. So they actually put him in the squad car. And I'm just standing there next to my truck that's not having no gas in it. You know, I'm standing next to the trunk, and I'm looking in the trunk. You can clearly see two laptops, you know what I'm saying, a bag of, I don't know if he had took some clothes or what the hell that was in that garbage bag. But I'm nervous. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I'm just standing here like, yeah, you know, we just ran out of gas. We was not trying to break into this building. I'm like, do you want to see the puddle of pee and the tissue back there? Like, I literally went back there to pee. And he was like, well, we're just going to verify all you guys' information. Um, by the way, your tags are expired, so we will be taking this car. I'm like, fuck. Y'all. <laughs> if, that, if that karma wasn't fast enough, it, it get worse, y'all. It get worse. So, they clearly run his name. Tommy Egan's name come up. And Tommy Egan got more warrants and more shit going on than Ghost's name by himself. Why would you use your brother's name not knowing what your brother got going on? Like, So he's going to jail. They're running my name, and it's multiple identities coming up. They thinking I'm some type of con artist. I'm going to jail, y'all. They, they came back to that car and said... You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. I instantly get the cry. All I'm thinking about is the twins. Like, what? Why they putting these cuffs on me? I'm like, what are you talking about? They just reading me my rights, not answering no questions. Why am I going to jail? I'm crying. They put me in a whole nother car that had pulled up. All I hear is ghosts like, it's going to be okay, baby. It's going to be okay. I got you. I got you. They can't hold us down. I'm like, what are you doing? What did I do? What did I do? They're like, ma'am, you are out here in front of a building with this man that has warrants on his name. He lied about his name. So they end up going through my car and he has some type of, I don't know if it was his probation paperwork or he had something in my car with ghosts. You know what I'm saying? With his name on it. So, as they search in my car, they find out that he's not even the person that he said he was. And I don't have no ID. I can't prove who I am. I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail for driving without a license. Um, indecent exposure. Because I didn't told them I peed behind the building. So, now I'm getting indecent exposure um what else they get me for y'all i i forget but I, long story short i'm in jail they go in here they book me y'all i wish i wonder if i can find my <sighs> mug shot because i definitely took a mug shot i'm gonna try to look it up and see i ain't never i ain't never i ain't never googled that but if i find it y'all gonna see it if i can't find it Y'all might not even be seeing this video. If y'all seeing this video right now, if y'all don't, if y'all don't start tapping in, like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. I am in jail doing the whole fingerprint <sighs> mug shot. I'm bawling tears. You would have thought I was in there for murder. 
I'm bawling, y'all, crying. I'm just, my babies, my babies. And the police looking at me like, what is she crying for? They like, ma'am, you only in here because you didn't have your ID. I'm like, but my babies, my twins, they're like, well, you should have thought about that before you was out here driving with no ID. Y'all, I get the cry even more just completely on some bitch shit, right? So they put me in this cell. I'm crying. You would have thought I was in there for a bit. That's how I feel. I, that, this is not for me. This is not for me, baby. If you do crime or if you do anything, don't do it to me, around me, because I'm snitching. If it was... If it was a situation where if you don't tell us so-and-so right now, you got to be in here for 10, 15 years. It was, let me tell you, it was Usher's sister and then Cash was there too. And then I think Sloth had something to do with it because when I had came back, she was standing there and then Gremlin, oh Gremlin, it was really like, I'm telling you, don't don't include me don't wrap me up in it because i'm gonna get up out of it y'all i was tripping in there right so time is going on i need to get my phone call they not let me get my phone call y'all i'm like oh my god i just want to go home so time is going on i end up in that cell for at least six hours i don't even know what time it is i don't even know if the sun's shining if we went to jail at five o'clock in the morning it had to be at least let's see six seven eight nine ten eleven in the morning you know what i'm saying i'm like please let me make a phone call so i eventually get my phone call i call my mom and she what are you doing i said mom go to my house the twins are home Cut my cousin, you know, she know my cousin. We all family. She like, I'm like, cousin was upstairs supposed to be looking after them. I don't know if she left and went to work. I don't know what's going on. She like, oh my God, Ebony, I cannot believe you. She trying to cuss me out on the jail phone. I'm like, ma, just please go to my house and check on the twins, please. Y'all. I go to my arraignment or the little video court thing or whatever because we still in the precinct it's not like you know they gave me an orange jumpsuit and you know made me go to some other jail i was still in the precinct so we go to the little room for the video court they trying to tell me i got all type of fraud charges i got all type of um identity theft stuff going on all type of I'm like, what? Now, at this point, my mom and my dad had got there. So, they in the lobby basically trying to bail me out and waiting for me. And I'm in court and they trying to tell me I'm somebody else. Now, the way my last name is spelled, let's say, y'all see my name is D-A-S-H-A-W-N. So, let's just say they got my name on the paper as Ebony D-O-S-H-A-W-N. I'm looking down at the paper. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is not my name. This is not my name. So, y'all, I don't know why I didn't tell my mama to go to Angel House and get my ID and stuff. I guess that wasn't clicking because this whole time I'm acting like I'm really going down for murder. Why not just have them bring your ID since you went to jail for not having your ID? So, I'm telling them that this is not my name. This is not how you spell it. I tell them the correct spelling they basically pulled up the wrong Ebony Deshaun. It's literally an Ebony Deshaun, same birthday, same name, just a different year. She's like, like seven years older than me. Literally. Now, I don't know if she's still in my identity because what's the coincidence? It's an Ebony Deshaun with the same birthday, just a different year because you clearly got to look old. So is you was she trying to I don't I still don't know to this day y'all how they got how that person is that close with our information. You feel me? So they had to look me up, clear it up, you know what I'm saying? And they still had to bail me out, but I was free and clear. Like I got a ticket for the, you know, for the car or whatever, driving without um identification and all this other stuff. And they let me out, y'all. So, once I leave out the courtroom, Ghost is actually in one of the little holding cells right there by the courtroom. So, they escorted me back to the cell because I got to wait and get processed out. And he up and... <laughs> yeah. 
he up in the little square window still talking about i love you girl i love you i'm gonna get out of here they can't hold us down they can't they can't keep us apart I'm like i love you too Yeah. I finally get out. I end up being in jail for like eight, nine hours, y'all. I finally get out. My mama and my daddy is completely quiet in the car. Now, my mama and my dad, I am, let me just give y'all not really a timeline, but around this time, I'm probably, I had the twins at 20. I'm probably like 24, 25 around that time. I am going to jail. I don't even know if my mom had knew about the whole ghost situation. I don't know if the police explained to her what happened. I never told her about the whole ghost situation. I just told her I ran out of gas and went to use the bathroom around the building and they, you know, end up taking me to jail because I didn't have my ID. That's what I told her. But the way I felt <laughs> in that car ride with my mom and my dad, like I was 10 years old again and I got caught stealing from the candy store. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't got a F on my report card. Like, I have never been so humble in my life in that moment like what the fuck are you doing ebony like they didn't even have to say anything i was saying it to myself you know i was just so happy to be out of jail realizing that this life is not for me but my babies y'all my mama ended up telling me that my cousin got up for work in the morning and left because she just assumed that we was at home. She didn't think to look for our car because I just told her I was going to the store. So when she got up to do her normal schedule to get ready for work and leave, she wasn't double checking. You know what I'm saying? She just assumed I was back because it's nobody's fault but my own. My mama said she had to go to the twins back window and get them out of the window. She said when she looked in the window, they was just up playing with their toys. And she lifted their window up because their window was still open for some fucking reason. I mean, thank God it was. But seeing what happened in my last story time when Kanan tried to get Casey about the window, you would think I would have locked it. But thank God it wasn't locked because my babies, y'all. So my mama is giving me this whole speech. She basically telling me if I want to sign over my rights to these kids, then I might as well do it now you know you could just pay child support and i would take care of them because you are being very irresponsible you're not making none of the right decisions and da 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 da, da. and i'm crying i'm just sitting there really thinking about my life like coming from the whole toxic situation with canaan then i hop immediately into this situation with ghosts and i'm out here doing stuff i've never even thought about doing to going to jail and my babies basically being at home by themselves for i don't know how many hours if i left the house actually i had left the house at like maybe midnight and that's when we went and sat at angel house but they were asleep so my babies probably woke up had to be about eight nine o'clock in the morning like they usually do but my cousin had been gone since five o'clock in the morning so my babies was by themselves for like four hours y'all Four hours, my baby was by day seven, so my mama was able to get to them and get to that window. Four hours, they was by themselves, and the whole hour just woke, probably walked around the house looking for me. And she said they was just playing with their toys when she looked in their window. So, you know, I'm glad they was. They probably did cry. It was a whole hour, so they probably cried a little bit when they first woke up, and when they realized wasn't nobody coming, they just started playing with each other. Like, well, we might as well play because we don't know where the fuck my at. Yeah. And the bunny is telling me that this story is over. So until next time, you guys, be productive, be safe, and have fun.